hopefully I, I pass, right? So you believe me. But uh, obviously, it's, I, I'm, I'm not a big expert. I'm just learning myself when, when I teach it. And I enjoy it. Uh, so uh, here, right, uh, and uh, this, we're still finishing with, uh, with exponential random variables. And uh, let's see. Exponential random variables, and what I like again, some sometimes in mathematics, they do it in analysis and also in probability here and there, is that uh, I actually thought of those subjects as true stories, right? So I have a friend, uh, his actual name is Dave, and uh, he is one little bastard. So uh, he would usually be very late to our meeting. So if he schedules something, he would be late, uh, sometimes very late. All right, so I would call, I would, I would always uh, adjust. I called it uh, Dave time correction. And so imagine that what happens is this. Imagine that, uh, uh, well, I meet Dave, let's say, at, by his house, and he sometimes meets me uh, by my house, then we start our very long walks. So let's say the meetings will be scheduled at uh, 12, right? So if it's at his house, um, he would exit his house once, uh, you know, he would exit his house with um, an exponentially distributed parameter, uh, one over 10, right? So his, his time of exit, so if he says uh, at 12, I'm gonna come out, his time of exit from 12 will be exponentially distributed with parameter one over 10. And um, of course, uh, I knew that, so what I would do is I would not arrive at 12 precisely, my arrival time would be uh, uniformly distributed, let's say, between 10 at 12 and 12, 10. So far clear? So I would arrive uh, randomly between 12 and 12, 10, and he would exit his house uh, with exponential distribution with parameter one over 10. And on the other hand, of course, because, uh, well, he did not really uh, take me into consideration, when he came by my house out of spite, I would also exit my house uh, at a random moment. And so if it's a way scheduled meeting at 12 by my house, he would come whenever he would come. And when I see he's there, I will randomly exit my house uh, uniformly within uh, 10 minutes uh, from his arrival. Moment. Okay. So that's the conditions that I described. Okay. So then the questions guys, and let's try to solve them together. Uh, so given that Dave has been waiting for me for the past six minutes by my house, what is the probability he will have to wait another three minutes? Simple question. Go ahead, calculate, please. And don't forget to show me your faces. I'll miss you otherwise. You see what happened here. Simply, he is by this window and has been waiting for me for the past six minutes. What's the probability he has to wait additional three minutes?
By the way, Andrew, nice to see you, or at least your avatar. I haven't seen you, I think, in a week. I, I was wondering if everything's good. Um, thanks. Hmm. One quarter. Okay, guys, so uh, the answer is uh, one quarter. You don't need to do integration with uniform random variables. They are very simple. Uh, they are what, right? So what you know is that the probability is proportional to the length in this case. Does it make sense? Probability and length are proportional. Uh, so that means what, what am I visualizing, right? So it's conditional probability here. Uh, it means what? So A is my, um, the, the, the moment of my time when I, when I exit, when I arrive at the meeting. And I want to figure out the probability that A is bigger than three plus six, given that A is bigger than six. So that means here, uh, over six minutes uh, since, uh, since the simulation has started. And what's the probability then that it will be three plus six. So very simply, the probability on the denominator that uh, you see, it's simply the intersection of those two events, which is uh, then the probability that A is bigger than uh, three plus six or A bigger than nine divided by the probability that uh, A is bigger than six. Yes, and the probability that A is bigger than six is simply, uh, you know, we have a, 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 a number length of uh, size 10 and uh, bigger than six means we have uh, four out of 10 units. That's over here, right? Just proportionality from six to 10 is the length of the line segment and uh, the full length is 10, so four out of 10. Right, it's it what uniform random variables just amount to be. Now, probability that a is bigger than nine, it's just uh, one unit divided by ten. So one over ten divided by four over ten gives us one quarter, and David was correct. Everybody says uh, why the answer is one quarter, correct? Uh, I see at least uh, one face looks lost. Uh, doesn't matter, uh, Shulamit. Uh, you see. Equal is impossible, right? It never happens that uh, that, uh, that I exit exactly in nine minutes. After. In continuous random variables, remember you have this thing. It's a probability of a particular outcome is zero. You calculate areas, right? So you are you can ignore. You can say greater than or equal to nine or greater than nine. It will not affect continuous probabilities. Okay, we spoke about the, that paradox and we gave two interpretations, right? One way to interpret is that, uh, you know, you would have to specify infinite moments of time. To exit exactly at nine, it has to be, uh, well, nine minutes after, it would be 9.00000 forever, right? So you have to satisfy many conditions. Uh, that's one way to look at it, right? Another way to look at it is that uh, it's, it's an extremely unlikely event, okay? So, yeah, either impossible or very, 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 very unlikely. So it's so unlikely that you you would be surprised to see. So the answer is then one quarter, right? He has to wait. Uh, so the probability that waiting will be uh, nine minutes, given that it has already been six minutes, is one quarter. Second question. Uh, now, given that I was waiting for the past 10 minutes for Dave to come out of his house, what is the probability I will have to wait 10 or more minutes? Right. In, in addition to those 10. So I'm looking at my clock and I see I was waiting already 10 minutes long. What's the probability I have to wait another 10 minutes? Calculate, please.
You remember, guys, exponential distribution, right? Which means what? Which means the fact that uh, something happened, everything is reset. Exponential distributions, as we saw, are memoryless. Which means uh, it's the same as if, so yes, no memory. No memory at all. Which means that um, it's as if we just started. So uh, if you remember, right, it's the same as uh, probability that uh, I just arrived and I just started waiting. So it's the probability that D is bigger than 10. And uh, the density function for this parameter is given as follows, right? It's one over 10 e to the minus t over 10. Uh, so it's easy to integrate, come on, it's very, very easy to integrate. So you integrate. Uh, from 10 to infinity and what you get is e to the power of minus 1 or roughly 0 0.37 okay so even if i waited uh, for him five hours right if i look at my clock and i waited five hours it does not make dave come quickly it means if already the five hours passed and he's not there i am equally likely to wait any amount of time as I, as if i just arrived uh, and then um, okay so that was uh, uh, part b and um, also a true thing. So I'm annoyed and I tell him, I tell him that he is extremely inconsiderate. Almost all PDFs have memory, David. Which is, again, you have uh, a, um, eerily a name similar to my friend. Be careful. Almost all PDFs have memory. We proved it uh, in this uh, lecture note. Right, so uh, if it's not exponentially distributed and continuous, uh, unless it's expo uh, so, it would, would have memory. So, anyhow, back to this question. So uh, then, I'm irritated by the fact that I have to wait so long, and I say, "Well, uh, that's not nice of you. That's not considerate." And he makes the following remark. So he says, "On average, we wait for one another the same amount of time." And here is our reasons. Right. So, if he comes to um, uh, to visit me at my house and then on average it will take me five minutes to exit the house right so he has to wait for me on average five minutes when he comes to visit me when i come to visit him well let's say we schedule to meet at 12 to, be, to by his house right so then um he on average will take 10 minutes to exit the house Whereas I, on average, will take five minutes to get there. So I will, on average, arrive at 12.05, and uh, he will arrive, on average, on 12.10, yes? And therefore, I will be waiting five minutes. So I wait for him five minutes, he waits for me five minutes, on average, all things being equal, yes? And my question is, of course, what do you think? You. On whose side are you? On Dave's side or on my side? My side, well, of course, right? You don't know Dave, and you don't want to. But if you're on my side, explain why you're on my side, right? We don't just join uh, sides for no reason, just because that's the side that you should be on, right? You're not opportunistic. You just want justice and truth. So what is just and true here? No, but uh, again, right, on average, uh, I make him wait five minutes. On average, he makes me wait five minutes. Is that a true claim, first of all? Yes or no? And secondly, even if it's a true claim, uh, who is right here? That's why I would never live in Germany. You cannot be late, right? German time, you're always in time. So the first thing to verify, guys, is he right about average? Verify whether or not it's true that on average we wait for each other five minutes each.
So David says yes. Uh, no, uh, like, he never has to wait for me 10 minutes because, uh, well, sometimes in 10 minutes is the maximum you will have to wait, yes? It's possible that you will wait 10 minutes, but, uh, or, or very close to 10 minutes, right? You're, you're in essence right. The probability he waits longer than 10 minutes never happens. So, Nurusima, uh, you say no, as in um, uh, not the same average, yes? Okay. Let's see. So this is what I wrote, and let me know, of course, if you agree, right? Uh, hopefully, no mistake is made, right? So uh, first of all, the expected value of A is five, right? Uh, the expected value of my arrival or exit, whatever you like, arrival at the meeting place is five minutes. That's because that's a randomly, well, that's a randomly distributed uh, variable, uniformly distributed variable, so it's five, yes? We know that it's easy to figure out it's by symmetry or by, uh, you know, integration. Now, what's the expected value uh, of Dave's uh, arrival time to the meeting place? The expected value D is the integral from zero to infinity of t multiplied by the density function. So when you do the calculation, you do integration by parts and you get the number 10, okay? So uh, on average, Dave arrives to his appointed time 10 minutes uh, after the appointment, yes? I arrive to, to the appointment time on average five minutes later, good? So, uh, so then how much uh, does, the, does um, uh, do I have to wait for him? The amount of time I have to wait for him is D minus A, right? His arrival time uh, minus my arri arrival time, correct? That's the average amount of time I have to wait for him. So the expected value D minus A is, it's linear, so it's the expected value of D minus the expected value of A, which is five, yes? Uh, so as long as you agree with this calculation, uh, it seems that he waits for me for five minutes, on average, uh, I have to wait for him uh, five minutes on average, at least in those uh, circumstances, yes? However, uh, you might, of course, notice that, let's say, what's the probability that, uh, uh, that I have to wait for him over 10 minutes? He definitely, as Eli just mentioned, uh, never has to wait for me more than 10 minutes because uh, I will be there, right? But the probability I wait for him more than 10 minutes, it's D minus A bigger than 10, uh, which is the probability that D is bigger than A plus 10, right? And this uh, you can solve by, uh, by double integration. I hope you see that, right? So it's the integral uh, from zero to 10 of one over 10, uh, A plus 10 to infinity. So I condition it. You see what I do here? Summation is just like I, I, I condition it based on what A equals, right? So let's say I arrive at zero. When does he arrive? I arrive at zero plus dA, where does he arrive? So uh, this uh, is easily created uh, to be an integral, a double integral by conditioning, yes? So if you, see, if you see what I did over here, d bigger than a plus 10, one over 10 dA, this is uh, conditioning, right? So I'm using Bayes formula. So that's like a sum uh, for all the moments of arrival where I will come to the appointment from zero to 10. And, uh, and he will have to then arrive 10 minutes or more later to the appointment, so, right? So it's like summing over all possible A's. And then the, that means that instead of, because uh, the actual A has probability zero, so I just take A plus DA, which is uh, basically, it, it's, it's gonna be roughly between values between A and, and A plus DA. The probability is one over 10 times DA. So uh, that's just very simply Bayes formula in integral form. Does it make sense? We, we, we divide, we use the same form when we talked about uh, beta distribution. So I hope you kind of see the idea already. And uh, that becomes this double integral. I do the calculation and I see 0 0.23. So it's 23% likely that I will have to wait for him more than 10 minutes. And uh, 
G is an exponential bastard, truly, right? A memoryless never remembers my birthday, truly. That's how I easily think of this uh, problem. I remember his birthday all the time. It also corresponds to the death of my grandfather. So, of course, I remember his birthday. And uh, he never remembers mine. Hmm. Yes. If it were polite to curse, I would. So, moving to the next lecture. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, uh, you have this thing, it makes you fulfilled, right? It's like you have little stories about, well, uh, you know, little stories that encode mathematics. So, mathematics that encodes little stories. Uh, oh, right, not here. So uh, we begin talking about uh, jointly distributed random variables. Uh, and um, it's pretty much the things that you already can guess, I hope. Uh, so here is the situation, right? So we have the cumulative uh, distribution function for let's say two, para two variables, x and y, uh, is simply the probability that x is less than or equal to a and y less than or equal to b. I no longer assume continuity just here. Uh, so A is between minus infinity uh, and infinity, and B is the same, between minus infinity and infinity in general. So uh, from here, I can figure out the distribution for just X alone. So what's the, uh, what is Fx of A? That just means that X is less than or equal to A, and that means that Y can do whatever it likes. So Y is between minus infinity and infinity. Yes? So that's the probability uh, that uh, I can just, I know probability is uh, continuous if I have a sequence of uh, increasing events. So if I take limit as b goes to infinity of, uh, of this event, I can factor this limit outside of the probability function. Uh, so it's limit as b goes to infinity of f a b, which amounts to f of a at infinity, right? a at infinity. So this will be the, um, I, I think you call it marginal cumulative distribution for X or something of the sort. So it's just the cumulative distribution for X. By exactly same token, we have the cumulative distribution for Y. It's, um, you just plug infinity instead of A. And again, guys, whenever anything is confusing, you just stop me. So in theory, every question about the probability of X and Y can be asked, uh, can be answered in terms of the cumulative uh, distribution for y and x. So for instance, suppose that I wanted to calculate the probability that x is bigger than a and y is bigger than b. So what I can do is, uh, first of all, I fix y bigger than b and I break x bigger than a into what? Into x less than infinity minus x less than or equal to a. Okay, you see this? So this minus that. Um, that will be the original probability here. And then I, I underlined, I, I then continue to split uh, each of them to make it look like the function f eventually. So here x is less than infinity, y uh, bigger than, uh, than uh, b. I can break it into x less than infinity, y less than infinity, minus x less than infinity, y less than or equal to b. This is this event. You see, I just break, uh, I keep X fixed and I break the Y's. And uh, for the second part, I do the same, right? I keep, in this case though, I keep, uh, I keep a a X fixed and I break um, Y. So that would be Y less than infinity minus Y uh, less than or equal to B, okay? So simple probability considerations. I just write it as a union of these joint events. And uh, I see that that's what I get. And then when simplifying, that amounts to what? So uh, first part is simply one. This is uh, this is one. Pro X and Y will always be numbers, so they're going to be less than infinity. Probability of that is one minus. Next part is um, uh, this is uh, going to be instead of X, I plug infinity, and I put B. So that's the cumulative distribution, or the uh, marginal distribution for Y minus the marginal distribution for x uh, and plus um, the cumulative distribution at uh, a and b okay similarly here is another um, example of such calculations so suppose i want to know 
in terms of the cumulative distribution, the probability that X is between A1 and A2, and Y is between B1 and B2. So what is this? Uh, this is, um, I just continue, I break it apart. I just, for example, uh, here, I first uh, keep Y unbothered, and I just break the X. So it would be X less than or equal to A2, minus the same thing, but where X is less than A1. So I just break this part. And then I, uh, I, and then I break for each of them individually, I break the Y. And then I arrive at this uh, formula over here. I hope uh, the idea is clear, guys. I, I don't hear you, uh, so I hope it's, it's clear. Yeah, good? Okay, wonderful. So, of course, if we have discrete random variables, I can have um, a joint probability mass function, and that's defined, let's say pxy is defined probability that x equals to little x, y equals to little y. And from there, I can calculate the uh, probability mass function for x and for y, which is basically I just add up all the probabilities that have fixed the x and vary all the y. And here I do the opposite. So clear ideas, right? Here is um, a simple idea of uh, let's say when I when I have a joint distribution. So we have a sample out of an urn of size three, and we have three red balls uh, in the urn. We have four white balls and five blue balls in the urn. And we let x be the number of red balls and y the number of white balls that we sampled, right? Uh, they add up to three. So then I have different mass functions. So I, for example, have probability of zero, zero, means I only sampled uh, the blue balls. So five choose three out of 12 choose three. So randomly pick three balls here, right? And I have this number here. I uh, can have, for, for example, imagine I have zero, uh, what is it, zero red balls and uh, one, uh, in one, um, in one, which one of them? In one white ball, I think. All right, so it's uh, five choose two. Out of the blue balls, I have to choose two. And out of the white one, I have to choose one. All right, so you have this probability and onwards, right? You have lots of those probabilities. Uh, any question about it, right? So this is the, the, basically the only possibilities I can get is uh, entirely zero, zero white and zero red. Uh, and a bunch of other combinations, right? And all this information is uh, possibly nicer to put in, into a table, right? So here, the uh, here the raw sum. Uh, so the rows here represent uh, represent let's say uh, getting the i here represents uh, how many red balls I think I get, and j represents how many white balls I get. Yes. So uh, the sum in the row. So this number here. Uh, the sum here means uh, uh, means um, <sighs> the sum here means uh, the, the the probability that I get exactly zero. Um, I think red balls, zero red balls. zero red balls yes uh, so the zero red balls and zero white balls and one white ball and two white balls and three white balls but something like this right and uh, and similarly the column here might represent this means uh, i get um, one white ball one white ball is here right and here i have two white balls and uh, so on and so forth Uh, so, um, yeah, let's see what else is easier, right? So then, um, uh, so we have jointly continuous variables. Jointly continuous variables, uh, we have the following. So we have X and Y are jointly continuous. If there is a density function, actually, let me try to uh, show you, I think, what I think of, uh, of jointly continuous density functions. I'll be right back. Give me one second.
Yes, uh, so you know this device, guys, yes? Uh, this toy, right? So, right? This. Uh, so that's what I tend to think of uh, uh, when I consider joint, uh, jointly continuous random variables, right? So uh, each of those things are like very thin histograms, right? So this is a three-dimensional histogram picture, right? So you can imagine that every random variable in principle can be approximated by discrete random variables, right? You can see that this looks like a continuous shape, but uh, really imagine that uh, we consider certain probabilities of, let's say, maybe we're tossing darts, right? We're throwing dar darts into, uh, into a board and uh, uh, wherever the dart hits, we consider it a hit and that raises the bar a little bit, right? And then we basically have a calculation of uh, how many, uh, how many uh, you know, wh where, where, where is it likely that the hit is made? Which X, Y a hit is made, right? And let's say this is the shape that is going to be generated. Yes. So if I have, uh, if, if I make a discrete uh, random variable with many fine uh, points where you can consider a hit, that will be well approximated, possibly by a continuous random variable. Yes. Or maybe a discrete well approximates a continuous random variable. And this outline, the outline of, uh, or the skyline of those things, uh, forms uh, the probability density function, uh, which uh, you can see is f x y. Make sense? Good. Uh, so you have a feeling of what um, those random variables are. Yes? Uh, so questions about probability in that case are answered um, yeah, so it's, it's again, I remember with the haircutting example, it's the same thing, but, uh, but in, in higher dimension. So uh, really when you see those uh, signs, the integral size is just a, a fancy summation, nothing more. So if you understand stuff about summation, you understand the integral pretty well. All right, so uh, let's say then, uh, probability questions is just uh, summing the volumes of those uh, pins, right? They're thin pins the sum of their volumes uh, will represent by, by default, you construct it so that the sum of the volumes will represent uh, probability. So then if I have this uh, outline, the outline which was my hand in those pins, let's say, right, uh, that would be my density function, which you possibly obtain experimentally. You just do a bunch of simulations and you see, you see how the skyline is formed. Uh, so probability that X uh, and Y are an element of C where C is a, is a two dimensional region will be just an integral over, uh, over C of this density function dx dy. What's dx and dy? Those are the uh, width and uh, breadth, for I'm not sure what you call it, length and width, right, uh, of the box of the pin. And uh, this here, fxy, is the height of the pin. So you, you get the volume of the box, the height times width times length. Good. So that would be the pin box here that, uh, that we have, the pins in this uh, object here, right, in this toy. So then we have the cumulative uh, distribution function FAB. It's probability that X is less than or equal to A, Y less than or equal to B. We have this thing. Yeah, which is what? Which is um, simply... <sighs> So it's uh, simply the integral from uh, minus infinity to P. Uh, and the integral from minus infinity to A of uh, this density function. That's the, cum that's the cumulative distribution. Because again, this region is what? It's X less than uh, or equal to A, Y less than or equal to B. So it's obtained by integrating over that particular um, infinite rectangle that has an upper corner at A, B. Right, so it has a corner at A, B, and here below B, and B, and below A. So, yes. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a accidental. So. Good. So we have uh, this integral, blah blah blah, and then from uh, from this, I can if I if I have the cumulative distribution, I can then obtain the uh, density function by uh, taking successive uh, partial derivatives. 
So partial derivative with respect to B, then partial derivative with respect to A. Uh, it's a, a successive application of, um, of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, the, the order of integration can be reversed, right? It just sometimes it's more convenient to present it uh, one way, sometimes another. I lie, right? So uh, how you present the integration, it's uh, up to you. In this case, you can reverse it, right? It's a, it's a rectangle, you can reverse it, no harm done. Um, yeah, so what you do is then taking the derivative with respect to B, it's like you see, you look at, at the inner integral as one giant function, and then uh, you just take B and you plug instead of uh, Y. So it becomes uh, just this integral from minus infinity to infinity of the same density, but Y is replaced by B. And then you take derivative with respect to A and you obtain, here it is, right? And you obtain little f A B. Good. So uh, the probability that X is in A, it's uh, then, uh, it's then what? The probability that X belongs to A is then the same thing as X in A and Y can do whatever it likes. So that would be the integral where x is in a and y is from minus infinity to infinity, right? And that's this integral. And so you can see that uh, that uh, f x, which is equal to uh, to the integral from minus infinity to infinity, is the marginal density function for x. In other words, that's the density function for just x alone. And by a similar reasoning, um, this f y, which is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f x y dx will be the marginal density for y. Yeah? So, yes, here is this, uh, here is this function. Uh, and what I would like you to do, see how good you are with it, calculate those integrals a, b, and c, please. Calculate a, b, and c.
Okay, so um, uh, thank you, Hugo. Uh, for A, I'll show you, by the way, uh, there is, you might be right, right? Might be right. So uh, so let's let's look at uh, eight. Yes, Hugo. Uh, uh, so just, I think, yes, it should be one minus E to the power of minus two, yes. Otherwise, you're right. So uh, the easiest way to do that, guys, is uh, as follows, right? So x bigger than one, y less than one, you imagine uh, a giant rectangle, right? In this case, of course, uh, the, well, in the bottom part, you don't need to consider uh, y going to minus infinity because y cannot be low, lower than uh, zero. So y varies from zero to one and x varies from uh, one to infinity. So we have this integral, good? And uh, notice in this integral, I can break apart uh, it's really made out of two exponential random variables if you take e to the two uh, minus two y two and two here that's uh, one exponential random variable and another is e to the minus x right so i can factor them out because again why can i factor them out it's very similar to a distributive property uh, when you are adding numbers what is this if you think about it right um, we can i guess i suppose after class if you want to we can discuss that so you can do this that's really nothing more than uh, distributive property, right? It's just what I see it as is, for example, uh, the integral from zero to one uh, of two e to the minus two y dy is multiplied uh, by, uh, by uh, each of them. For, for each particular x, uh, we have this, uh, for each particular x, we have this uh, term multiplying it. So we can just factor it out and we get this expression. That's simpler to solve. So uh, the first integral is simply e to the minus one. The second integral is one um, minus, um, it's one minus, um, minus uh, e to the power of minus two. That's when you plug one there. The one here comes from uh, plugging zero. Okay, just basically the integral here would be e to the minus two y with a minus and then uh, you plug zero and then subtract, you plug one. Good. Uh, so ne next part is probability that uh, X is less than Y, please.
at least set up the integral this. Uh, um, okay, Hugo, it's, uh, so one minus two thirds is one third, great. I, th I think you're right if I remember correctly. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at it. So here, probability that X is less than Y, you can break it by, so to speak, conditioning, right? So it's, uh, it's what? So it's uh, Y equal to a particular. So here's like a discrete, uh, discrete uh, breakthrough. Y equals to a particular value. Uh, then, uh, then X varies from, uh, uh, from zero to Y. For a particular value of Y, if Y is fixed, that would be uh, probability that X varies from this value to that value, right? And then I range over all the Y. So uh, that would be roughly my uh, dy, right? So that's dy times uh, the, uh, the density function. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, the integral for X is from zero to Y, right? And I add over, over all possible Y's here. So I get this integral. And uh, then I just a bunch of calculations and Ugo was correct, I do get one third. Thank you, Ugo. Uh, finally, probability that X is less than A, uh, simply Y can do whatever it likes from minus infinity to infinity. We carry out the calculation, again, we can factor out, we get one minus E to the power of uh, minus A. So here is um, a, a, a question here, right? So, and this question can be sometimes, some, some ideas can solve it very fast, some ideas solve it slower. So suppose we have a disk of some radius R and randomly we select a point within the disk. So each point is equally likely to be selected within the disk. So that, that, then of course you can imagine that the uh, skyline, all the buildings or the towers are of the same elevation, right? Because, uh, because it's like throwing a dart into the, uh, into the disk and every point is equally likely selected. So they are all climbing to the same elevation. So that's uniformly distributed. Yes? It's like uh, this thing, right? You see it? You understand why it's uh, all uniform, right? So because that means that uh, every point was selected as many times. If, if you discretize it, you, you here have lots of points, but uh, you know, you discretize it more, you have even more they are all, after a simulation, all will roughly be selected equally a num equally many number of times. So that's a uniform distribution. So what should C be? So you have to determine C. Uh, what should the uh, skyline, what's the elevation should be? And then uh, find the marginal densities of X and Y. And then compute probability that L is less than or equal to A, where L is the distance from the origin to the point A. Uh, to, so in other words, that means that the radius or the distance uh, is less than this number, particularly, right? That I select points within, with the radius uh, less than or equal to A. So what do you think, what is C?
Sí, what sí. What are you doing, guys? You're integrating something? It's simpler. Uh, what's the area of a circle, right? Or, or inside of a circle? It's uh, pi r squared, correct? So uh, uh, the if I, if I were to integrate it over this, because uh, all the elevations are the same, it's going to be c times uh, pi r squared. But that number has to be equal to 1. So c has to be 1 over pi r squared. Right? The integral must equal to 1. You normalize it, uh, as uh, somebody said, I think, last class. Right? I think it's not here. But you normalize. Right? So, uh, so that the, the full integral has to be equal to 1. You understand? So c equals to, you understand why, why it's c, right? Because that means that every point, if it's random, every point is equally likely to be selected. So if you discretize and create, uh, instead of a point, many very, very thin rectangles, those pinholes, then each pinhole is selected equally many a number of times given enough a number of simulations. So uh, that means that uh, each pinhole should be as tall because the probability of selecting each pinhole is the same, right? Uh, you, you see it, Josh, yes? Right, and the other is you see it, right? So uh, continuous random variable can be really thought of as a discrete random variable with many, many points that are very close together. So they don't look discrete. Uh, so, so that's why it's C. But then I know that the uh, addition of all the volumes of the boxes right, must equal to 1. But that would be the area of the circle times c, which is uh, c times pi r squared, which is, means c is equal to 1 over pi r squared. And we are done. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for the calculation of the marginal density. Um, uh, so I want to do, I do want to move a bit on. So to calculate marginal density, again, I, I, you know, they call it marginal or whatnot, but it's really the cumulative distribution of X that I want, right? So I want to uh, differentiate the cumulative distribution of X. So I start with uh, FX at A, which is probability that X is less than or equal to A, which means X is less than or equal to A and Y does whatever it likes. Y does whatever it likes. Then I'm hoping that you understand it. I kind of don't want to explain it. Uh, you can condition it, right? So you want y equal to a particular number, then uh, probability x less than or equal to a, then y equal to a different uh, number and uh, x less than or equal to a. Uh, so uh, what you what you end up having, also oh, you, you can even better maybe condition on what x is equal, to, right? Uh, so you 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 are going to uh, create the summation here which which corresponds to bayes formula so x varies from minus r to a and for each x uh, if i fix an x y uh, will vary uh, between minus r squared x squared square root to the positive square root okay that's where y varies because uh, that would be the periphery of the circle uh, and then um, and then the probability that x is roughly equal to little x is uh, is the density function uh, times uh, uh, times dx. So uh, uh, well, you know, you can you can if you think about it, you can see why it is this integral. You can use Bayes formula, I suppose. So we have this integral then, which uh, uh, once we integrate, the first part is easy to integrate it just twice times one over pi r squared root of r squared minus x squared dx. And then uh, this expression, I take the derivative at a, the partial derivative with respect to a, or uh, so that would be simply uh, instead of x, I replace a. And so the marginal density of f is 2 divided by pi r squared root of r squared minus x squared, where x varies from minus r to r. Yes? Oh, good. And uh, by symmetry, we have the same density function for y. Now, so we have this uh, density function. So the, the last question, maybe you will be um, nice and do it. Uh, find the expected value of the length. All right. So, um, so in other words, the expected uh, the expected distance of a randomly chosen point from the origin. What is that?
I explained it kind of uh, uh, fuzzily, but I hope guys, you right away see how this integral is coming. It's just a summation. I, what I imagine is that uh, at any point x, uh, I add up a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, of those spins uh, for that point x. So you have this. This is this is adding those spins uh, along the particular x, and then I move over the x. So just for for each x, I add the vertical. Well, basically, the, over, over the, the pins uh, for that x, which vary from lower part of the circle to upper part of the circle. Then I move to another x, I add those, I add those, and that's how I calculate this. So it's addition of addition. Makes sense, yes? You look very excited about it, Norosima. <laughs> you look like uh, you could go to my mother's dental office and uh, without any anesthesia, just go through the drilling. So, guys, come on, it's uh, very quick. So, what do we have here? We have that, uh, we already have the density function. The density function is, um, where is uh, for, uh, where is it? I think you are right, Hugo. Yes. So, Again, right? What's the what is the simplest way to figure this problem? Again, we are dealing with uniform uh, distributions, and their integration is not very essential usually, right? Uh, so why is it not very essential? Because uh, what are we asking? Probability that L is less than or equal to a is uh, is the same that uh, x and y are selected within a circle of radius a, 
and um, if the if the if the heights are all the same, then probability is proportional to the area, and this is just the area of a circle, right? In particular, it's the area of the region selected divided by total possible area. So in this case, it's uh, pi a squared. That's the probability here, right? Of that L is less than a probability that. Uh, um, Pi a squared divided by pi r squared, which is the full area. So I get uh, I get that probability that L is less than or equal to a. That's the cumulative distribution. Uh, it's a over r squared. Yes, uh, a over r squared. Uh, uh, and so uh, and then I take uh, the derivative of uh, that distribution, and I get the. Um, Yes, uh, and I get, and I take the derivative of the distribution, I get uh, 2a over r squared. 2a over r squared is the density function for, uh, uh, for L. It's little f, right? So I obtain the big fa, which is uh, L less than a, right? And I take the derivative with respect to a and I have this. So then uh, all it is now is to, the expected value is, uh, it's, it's you multiply by possible value of a is between zero and r, so it's uh, two a squared over r squared dA, and once you integrate it, uh, you get two thirds uh, of uh, r. Two, thir two thirds of r, as Ugo correctly uh, mentioned. And the other way to do that is, of course, to um, convert L into root x squared y squared and multiply by the density function, but then you have to switch parameters. You have to switch to polar coordinates. And then you get, uh, again, uh, the same, you have an integral and you get the same value, okay? So, um, well, I guess that's it for today. Any questions? And then goodbye. Oh, one second, what's the question? Yes. TY, TY. Unless you want to talk to me guys, right? So uh, uh, I'm gonna stop, oh, so, uh, well, uh, sashimi is always trying to make me feel old. Thank you so much, we'll see I'm better at it now. Okay, so uh, good night, good night. <laughs>